All praise is due to Allah who has guided us to this path and we would not have been able to guide ourselves had not Allah Ta'ala guided us, had not Allah Ta'ala chosen us. Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Qur'an, وَجَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ Allah Ta'ala says, strive, struggle in the way of Allah, as, sh as should rightfully be the case. He has chosen you. We are sometimes pleased that now the number of Muslims in the world is approaching two, bi uh, two billion. So, Alhamdulillah, there are almost two billion Muslims in the world. But we should all never lose sight of the fact that there are almost now 8 billion people on the planet. Which means not even half of the people on this planet are Muslim. We are a minority on the planet. In a place like Canada, no one needs to re be reminded we are a clear minority. And I only say that to say this. We've been chosen from all of the people on earth. Allah, Allah Ta'ala has chosen two billion to be Muslim. From all of the people in Canada, Allah Ta'ala has chosen whatever the number is, a million and a half, to be Muslim out of what, 17 million I'm not quite sure the population of Canada. 35 million. And how many Muslims? 1.5? 2? Clearly one. Clearly Muslims are a minority. Who is to back him? From that majority on this planet, he has chosen you to be Muslim. From that majority here in Canada, overwhelming majority, Allah Ta'ala has chosen you to be Muslim. Even from those who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, they consider them themselves culturally Muslim. We know, mashallah, the masjid is filled. But each and every one an individual in this masjid who's here right now knows five to ten Muslims who aren't in a masjid. So from that majority who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, he's chosen you to be serious about the religion. So we've been honored, brothers and sisters. We've been blessed. We've been chosen for a tremendous task. But what we want to talk about today is shaitan. Because I don't think we pay enough, enough attention to shaitan and his guiles his schemes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentions in the Quran, with qala rabbuka lil malaika tisjudu, with qala rabbuka inni ja'ilun fil ardu khalifa, qalu wa taj'alu fiha min yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku al-dima, wa nahnu nusabihu bihamdika wa nuqaddisu lak. So when your Lord said, Verily I'm going to place in the earth a vicegerent, a khalifa. The angel said, When Allah said to the angels, Verily I will place in the earth a vicegerent, one who will be a representative. Allah needs no representative. This is an honor for us. Allah could directly take care of the affairs of this earth. But He honored us as His vicegerent, as His custodian. 
And the angels hearing this, they said, will you place therein one who will shed blood and work most, uh, much corruption therein. While we, we glorify and sing your praises and extol your sanctity. And Allah Ta'ala said, Verily I know what you know not. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows our potential. He knows our potential for peace. He knows our potential for love. He knows our potential to freely, with no compulsion, to freely worship Him. And whenever we gather for Laylatul Qadr, and the angels descend, so Allah said to the angels, إِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَعِنٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً And they questioned, and it wasn't a question, it was a rhetorical question, not questioning Allah Ta'ala's wisdom. The night of power, Laylatul Qadr, the angels descend. And when they descend, what do they find? All over this earth, wherever there are Muslims, they find the masjid are filled, the masajid are filled. Men and women. Children. They're praying to their Lord. They're extolling their Lord. They're beseeching their Lord. We're beseeching our Lord. We're crying in prayer. We're listening to the Qur'an. In other words, we're doing what the angels said they would do. As if we're saying on Laylatul Qadr, as if we're saying when we gather for Jumu'ah in peace, Salamun hiya hatta matlil fajr. In peace and tranquility and worship, Nahnu. We are glorifying you. We are worshiping you. We are upholding your sanctity. This is the Adamic potential and we're doing it of our free will. The angels have no choice. But we are doing it of our free will. We're doing it out of our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're doing it out of our appreciation for the blessings Allah has bestowed upon us. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is mentioned as praying until his feet swole or until his feet cracked. And then his wife who narrates this, radiallahu anha, she asks him, لِمَا تَسْنُعُ هَذَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَقَدْ غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرَ فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَفَلَا أُحِبُّ أَنْ أَكُونَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Knowing that Allah has blessed me and has forgiven my sin and has warded off sin for me, from me should I not then love to be a thankful servant? So he was worshipping Allah out of his appreciation for the gifts and the graces that Allah Ta'ala bestowed upon him. And he's illustrating to us our potential in its fullness. Allah is the light of the heavens and earth. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard. But that light is reflected in its fullness just as the full moon reflects the light of the sun. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the Badr. Tal'a al-Badru alayna. Who reflected in the fullness the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he illuminated our way. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is the potential of the human. But we, are, we lose contact with our potential. Our, the light 
that we are that we've taken from the Prophet He's he's a lamp who's lit every one of the lights that is in our hearts by the leave of Allah. He's the Siraj and Munira. Ya ayyuhan Nabi, inna arsalna ka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadhira wa da'i'an ila Allahi bi'idhnihi wa Siraj and Munira. We've sent you, O Prophet, as a witness, as a warner, as a giver of glad tidings, as one who calls to Allah by His command and as a luminous lamp. And one of our exegists, one of our great commentators, he says the lamp can light numerous other lamps and its light is never diminished. So the lamp of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by the leave of Allah, is lit in the, the lamp that glows in every heart of ours and it never diminished from the fullness of his light sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But our light can grow dim. It can become crusted over. And it is shaitan who strives his utmost to prevent us from realizing the potential that we have within us. It is shaitan that strives his utmost to distinguish the light that is in our heart. So right after that he'll place this khalifa in the earth, and then he discusses that he teaches him the names and the meanings of things. What does he say immediately after that? So he's honored Adam alayhi salam. And he will honor his progeny with the custodianship of the earth. To be the caretakers and stewards of the earth. And then he honors him by having the angels prostrate to him. Not as, as the ulama say, this is not what is called tasjid, uh, uh, sujood al ibadah, sujood al tashrif. So, not to worship Adam. We only prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. But to further honor Adam after bestowing the honor of the, khala, the khilafa, the custodianship, the vicegerency on Adam, then he honors Adam further. By commanding the angels to prostrate to him. And then we said to the angels, prostrate yourself to Adam. And they did so except Iblis. He refused. He arrogated himself. And he became amongst those who reject faith. Why did he reject? Why did he refuse? He refused out of jealousy. I should have this honor. He refused because he was a racist. Well, who was the racist? Claims some superiority because of a physical characteristic. We're better than those people because our skin is light complexion and they have dark complexion that's the racist right you can have the other way around in America we had a movement the nation of Islam I'm sure they reached Canada they said we're the the black man is the supreme man and like all racists they claim a, a different origin to dehumanize those they claim superiority over so shaitan, he said, I'm better not only because of a physical characteristic, but because his origin is different. He said, I'm why didn't you prostrate when I commanded you to do so? He said, I'm better than him. Why? Because of a physical characteristic. And because of a different origin. You made me from fire and you made him from clay. So he could, he could make Adam the other. This is what the racist does. So the, the racists in the 20th century, 
Hitler and those who follow Hitler. They have theories that the, the, the non-Aryan people, that they had tails. You see drawings, people with tails, they're from monkeys. And we have a different origin. And this is the basis of our superiority. We're the Aryan, European, pure Europeans. And these other people, they're mongrel races. They're different. This is Satan's way. This is the way of Satan. So Satan, in his envy, so he also is envious of Adam. And a khayrum min. I should have this distinction. They should prostrate to me. I should be the one honor, being honored. Not him. So these are some of the ways of shaitan. Get this out of your life. How many of our young people are tortured? Allah Ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhalladheena amun udkhulu fi silmi kaffa wa la tattabi'u qutuwat shaitan innahu lakum aduwwun mubin You believers, oh you believers, enter wholly into Islam. Don't take some and reject others. Don't take some and ha hang on to your jahili, ignorant practices. Take it all. And don't follow the ways of Satan. Oh, we don't follow Shaytan. He is an open, clear enemy unto you. We don't follow Shaytan. We don't follow Shaytan. But when our son comes home, our daughter comes home, and says, we met this wonderful Muslim boy, this wonderful Muslim girl. MashaAllah. They're, they're pious. He's Hafiz of Qur'an. He's the president of the MSA. MashaAllah. She's a wonderful girl. She has memorized the Qur'an. MashaAllah, that's so rare. She must really be pious. Oh, MashaAllah. She's the vice president of the MSA. MashaAllah. Can I see your picture? Masha, he's too dark. She's too dark. Sorry. And too dark, just one shade off. Don't follow shaitan's racism. And then our young people are torn. And they have crises and they can't get married. And they're suffering. And they're thinking of just giving up altogether. When they see their non-Muslim colleagues. And it's so easy to get married. This is just one brief example. Then we read further into the chapter, Surah Baqarah. And Allah Ta'ala tells us, Shaitan threatens you with poverty. And his threat, don't spend fees of bililah. Don't pay your zakah. Most people don't do it nowadays. Don't spend in sadaqah. Don't help the masjid. Don't pay, spend for the school. Don't write the check to Islamic relief. Don't give to Care Canada. You might need that money. The economy is shaky. You might, miss, you might lose your job. And then you need the money. And shaitan yu'idukum al-faqr. Wa ya'murukum bil-fahsha. And so we, we become afraid of poverty. Pro the Prophet sallallahu amongst his distinctions. Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama kana ajwad al-nas. وَأَجْوَدَ مَا يَكُونُ فِي رَمَضَانِ حِينَ يَلْقَاهُ جِبْرِيلُ فَيُدَارِسُهُ الْقُرْآنِ وَأَنْ حِينَ يَلْقَاهُ جِبْرِيلُ فِي رَمَضَانِ كَانَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَجْوَدُ أَجْوَدَ مِنَ الْرِّيحِ الْمُرْسِلَةِ He was more generous than the free-blowing wind. The wind blows the seeds, the seeds everywhere. 
the, the Hawaiian Islands, they're the most remote place on earth. And they're volcanic, meaning they came up from the ocean. There are no flowers, there are no trees, there are no bushes, there is no vegetation. How did these, these, these islands that are 4,000 miles from Alaska, over 2,000 miles from California, 4,000 miles from Japan, 5,000 miles from Australia, Australia. How did they get flowers, the beautiful flowers, before the Europeans came and brought their seeds and things? How did they get these rare plants that are found nowhere else on earth? The wind blew the seeds there. The Prophet ﷺ, he was more generous than that wind. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you know why? Qala Abu Bakr in his Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أشجع الناس. He was the most courageous of people. What is the relationship? He didn't fear the consequences of poverty. He didn't fear the consequences of giving. He was impervi impervious to the threat of Satan. Satan. الشيطان يعذكم الفقر. In the face of that. The Prophet Sallallahu I don't fear poverty. Wallahu yuda'ifu liman yasha'. Shaitan threatens you with poverty and he has no power to enforce his threat. But Allah promises you if you spend, he'll increase to whomsoever he pleases. Who do you trust? When we fear poverty and then we stop spending, what happens? لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ وَمَا تُنْفِقُوا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ You will not attain to righteousness until you spend from what you love. Meaning until you spend from that which you might miss. When you spend from that which is dear to you. Not the old stuff in the garage. But that which means something. So if we listen to the threat of shaitan, we don't attain to righteousness. If we don't attain to righteousness, then the quality of religiosity in our community starts to wane. And when the quality of irreligi irreligiosity, religiosity rather, and our religious sentiment, and our confidence in the promise of Allah, and our reliance on Allah begins to wane, we become vulnerable to the whisper, whisper of shaitan. And then we fall into the fahsha. As shaitan yi'idukum al faqr wa yamurukum bil fahsha. And then he commands you with indecent things. And Allah promises you forgiveness from Himself and His grace. And Allah is most expansive and His grace is most knowledgeable of where to place them. Who do we trust, brothers and sisters? Shaitan is chiseling away. Before that, he mentions, Allah Ta'ala reminds us, Ya ayyuha al-nasu kulu mimma fil ard halalan tayyiba wa la tattabi'u qutuwaat al-shaytan innahu lakum aduwun mubin innama ya'murukum bisu'i wal fahshaa وَأَن تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ The shaitan, people, oh people, humanity, eat of the lawful and pure things we've provided for you. And don't follow the footsteps of Satan. He is unto you an avowed enemy. Verily he commands you with sins, as su al ithim and fahshat, those things which are vile by the standards of religion. al qabih shar'an. And that you say against Allah that which you have no knowledge of. And the relationship eating of the good and pure, that you say this is lawful to eat when Allah has made it unlawful. And this is unlawful when Allah has made it lawful. And other things. Oh, this is part of the religion. When Allah and His Messenger clearly 
have said it's not part of the religion. This isn't part of the religion because it, it, it's incompatible with my early 21st century sensitivities and sensibilities, which 10 years from now will be out of, out of style. Because what we, our standards are constantly changing. And that's why Allah Ta'ala has given us a, a transcending standard that transcends time and place for all of us to pull ourselves up to. 100 years ago, you wouldn't find a single woman in America or Canada who were wearing pants. Look at the pictures. Anybody bring me a picture of a woman in the United States or Canada or Europe from that, for that matter, 100 years ago, who were wearing pants. And I'm not picking on sisters who are wearing pants. I'm just trying to make a point. Today, most of the women wear pants, slacks, hopefully baggy ones. But the, the sensitivities change. The sensitivity, the sensibilities, they change. So what people might have argued for or against 100 years ago is the opposite today. Today they argue the opposite way. But Allah Ta'ala wants us to recognize a universal standard. Allah Ta'ala wants us to measure ourselves not a fact. Whereas shaitan, he wants us to be trapped in that which is time sensitive. Because he knows, I can get you with this today, but I can't get you with it tomorrow. Because today you find it attractive. Whereas tomorrow you might find it repulsive. So I want to lock you into time and place. And Allah Ta'ala wants us to be, have a vision that transcends time and place. To have a transcending vision. But to understand our time and place. But to understand it in light of that universal standard. To understand it in standard. This is one of shaitan's tricks. When taqulu ala Allah ma la ta'alamun. What is one of the things shaitan has a saying? If you're in the average university department, critical theory and relativist philosophy, there are no universal standards. Everything is relative. There is no ultimate truth. Which means by that standard, there is no Allah Ta'ala. As Al-Haq. Al-Maliq Al-Haq Al-Mubeen. The clear truth, indisputable truth, the ultimate truth. There is no ultimate truth. It's all relative. My truth is just as good as your truth. Why are you Muslims trying to privilege yourselves and impose your truth on me? What gives you that right? Allah Ta'ala, our Creator. Oh no, and then you're accused of, of being bigoted and all of these things. But that relative truth becomes the universal truth. When you say there is no ultimate truth, it's all relative, you're presenting that as a universal truth by which everything else is judged. And then in light of that relativism, we start saying against the law that which we don't know. This is all from shaitan. Allah Ta'ala, why? To undermine the very basis of religion. To undermine the very foundation of religion. When, uh, let's go back to the beginning of Surah Baqarah. So Allah Ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِآدَمُ آدَمْ أُسْكُنُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ اللهم صلى الله عليه وسلم وَإِذْ قُلْنُوا لِآدَمُ أُسْكُنْ أَنْتَ وَزَوْجُكَ الْجَنَّةِ وَلَا تَأْكُلُوا مِنْ اللهم صلى الله عليه وسلم لا
وكل منها رغدا حيث شئت ما ولا ولا تقرب هذه الشجرة فتكون من الظالمين فازلهم الشيطان عنها فأخرجهما مما كان في فقل نحبت بعضكم لبعض عدو ولكم في الأرض مستقر ومتاع إلى حين and then we said go out one of you an enemy to the other بعضكم لبعض عدو شيطان took this seriously شيطان took this seriously we don't take it seriously some of us think it's a joke we ride down the highway and we see the poster with Eminem on the billboard making shaitanic symbol and covering his eye as a, uh, an initiation into a satanic cult and putting the goat horns on his head and then we start doing it we go buy his album we finance his facade we finance the spread of devil worship like it's a joke shaitan takes this seriously one of you an enemy unto the other and then Allah tells us over and over إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوًا Shaitan is an enemy of you. Treat him like an enemy. But we think it's a joke. And then we see darkness descending all around us. And Allah sent us as that nur, as the light to de- repulse the darkness. We have to be serious about shaitan. He's behind the racism. He's behind the, the efforts to undermine religion. He's behind the godless philosophies. He's behind all of these things that are undermining the sanctity of human life. We have to be serious, brothers and sisters. This is no joke. It's no joke. And then when he uses the people up and abuses them, and throws them on the garbage heap. He renounces them. Nothing to do with them. I didn't lead them astray. They didn't have to listen to me. It's not my fault. They should blame themselves. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah bless us with the light of faith. May Allah bless us to be, take shaitan as an enemy. Treat him like an enemy. فَاتَّخِذُوهُ عَدُوَا Treat him like an enemy. Just as he treats us like his enemy. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَعْرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَقُمْ اسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين إن الله وملائكته يصعدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وكرة عيوننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. One of the things shaitan does, he glorifies that which is ugly. And hence his command to the fahsha. وَيَأْمُرُكُمْ بِالْفَحْشَاء The fahsha we mention, if you look in the tafsir, you look in the dictionary, al-qabih, that which is ugly and vile, shar'an, by the standards of the religion. You find his, his dupes, his awliya glorifying ugliness and de- despicableness. But Allah Ta'ala is beautiful and Allah loves beauty. Inna Allah jameel yuhibbul jamal. And Allah Ta'ala has beautified us with faith. He has beautified us with faith. حَبَّبَ إِلَيْكُمُ الْإِيمَانِ وَزَيَّنَهُ فِي قُلُوبِكُمْ he has, he has made faith beloved to you.
to you and has adorned it, has beautified it in your heart. Brothers and sisters, we are a community of beauty. You are beautiful people. The light of faith shines from your heart and illuminates your faces. The first thing when a person begins to lose their faith, what happens? Darkness descends upon them. Their faces lose their light. They become ugly even if they're physically attractive. You're repulsed. Even if they're a physically attractive person, you don't want to look at them. They become repulsive because of the, do, the, the gloom that descends upon their faces. Bring this beauty. We, as this ugliness descends on the world, bring your beauty out into the world. Hold on to it. Give hope to people by it. Share it with people. Uplift people. Share that beauty. We should be beautiful. Our individual relations should be beautiful. Our family relations should be beautiful. Where does the ugliness come from? Say, oh, I noticed so many Muslims are getting divorced. They're fighting with each other. They can't keep their families together. What does Allah Ta'ala, He says about the shayateen, shayateen ala mulki Suleiman. What does He say? فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُ مَا مَا يُفَرَّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَالزَّوْجِهِ It was the shayateen that learned that which destroys the harmony between the man and his wife. It's shaitan that brings the ugliness into the marriage. Brings the ugliness in the relationship between the brothers and sisters. Repulse shaitan with beauty. We should be beautiful people. Our institutions should be the embodiment of beauty. Our marriages should be beautiful. So that, of course, we're not going to be perfect. Some people will unfortunately not be able to make it. They'll be incompatible. But our general characteristic shouldn't be one of general ugliness. People should say those Muslims, mashallah, those are beautiful people. I work with the Muslim. I study with the Muslim. I don't know where the media is getting all this false information about them. They're terrorists and this and these are beautiful people. They're kind people. They're loving people. They're merciful people. They're compassionate people. Mash and their marriages, subhanallah. My neighbors, they're just the most wonderful couple I've ever met. Their marriage is so beautiful. This is the Muslim. But it takes work. And the work starts by not letting shaitan in. And how do we start and we'll stop here? We start by remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what is the khannas? This mentioned in Surah Nas. It's the shaitan that slinks away whenever the name of Allah is mentioned. You want to protect yourself. You want to protect your family. You want to protect your marriage. Make sure your tongue is moist with the remembrance of Allah. And shaitan comes. You're doing your daily ma'thurat or awrad or weird latif or azkar as sabah wal masa. And he goes away. He comes back in, later in the morning. You're praying duha. He comes back a little later. Before you eat your lunch, you're reading a little, something from the Qur'an. He comes back a little later. You're doing your evening hizb from Qur'an or your awrad. He comes back a little later. You're praying with the believers in, your, in the masjid or in your masjid in your house. And every one of our houses should have a musalla. And shaitan gives up. Man, every time I come to this guy, he's remembering Allah, I have to get out of there. I have to get out of there. No business. Business is good for shaitan because our tongues aren't moist with the remembrance of Allah. Our Qurans are put up on the shelf until Ramadan. And even then, they're taken down for the first few days and then we get back to the normal routine. 
May Allah bless us and give us tawfiq. May Allah give us strength. These are the days, brothers and sisters, for the strong believer. Al-Mu'min al-Qawi khayrun wa habbirullahi min al-Mu'min al-Da'if wa fi kullin khayr. Ihris ala ma yanfa'uka. Rasta'in billah wa la ta'ajiz. The strong believer is better than the weak believer and in each there is good. Strive for that which benefits you. Seek the help of Allah and don't be incapable. Don't be incompetent. Be competent people. But we need strong believers. Why? Because the, the assault, the attack of shaitan has never been stronger. And it doesn't take much. It just takes living our religion and being serious about it. That's all it takes. You shouldn't be depressed. Oh, shaitan, this khutbah is so depressing. You should be uplifted. Ah, I'm going to get serious. And how do you get serious? Just smile. Show the beauty in your smile. Speak good words and kind words to people. Take time to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this will uplift you. This will liberate your spirit. Shaitan, this is one of his greatest guiles. He convinces us that liberation lies in licentiousness. Do your thing. Then you'll feel good. No, you do your thing and you destroy yourself with fornication, with drugs, with alcoholism. You destroy yourself and you're feeling miserable. Yeah, go on and drink. Don't listen to those Muslims. Khamar, alcohol is haram. Marijuana is haram. Go smoke a bone. Forget those Muslims. They don't know what they're talking about. They just don't want you to feel good. And so you go and you're drinking and the next morning you're throwing up, you wake up and you're in your own vomit. You have a headache until 5 o'clock in the evening. Then it doesn't feel good anymore. Go, go on and fornicate. Then you come down with some venereal disease that if it doesn't kill you, it makes your life miserable. And then all the social havoc that's been wreaked in your life tears you apart. There is no pleasure in rebellion against Allah. But if you obey, obey subhan, Allah Ta'ala, and you keep the remembrance of Allah in your tongue and in your heart, you start to become enlightened. You start to, to see beauty all around you. You start to see Allah manifested, His names, His attributes manifested in everything around you. You look at the sky, and you, you, get, you start to see beyond the sky. And you say, man... Subhanallah, this is better than anything I've ever taken. You have a natural high. And that natural high, not even the sky is the limit. Not even the, the confines of the physical universe are the limits. You are an, introduced into a realm that is more expansive than the expanse of the heavens and the earth. That's true liberation. So they tell you liberation comes through licentiousness. The Muslim says, no, liberation comes through enslavement. But enslavement and servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ghfir lil muslimin wa al muslimat. Wa al mu'minin wa al mu'minat. Al ahya'i minhum wa al amwat. Rabbana la tuzik kulubana. Ba'd idh hadaytana. Wa hab lana min ladunka rahma. Inna kanta al wahhab. Rabbana afrag alayna sabran. Wa thabd qadamana. Wa unsurna ala al qawm al kafirin. Rabbana afrag alayna sabran. Wa thabd aqadamana. Wa tawafana muslimin. Wa afu anna. Wa ufir lana. Wa rahma. ارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال ونعوذ بك من الفقر إلى إليك ومن الذل إلى إلى لك ومن الخوف إلى منك اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبل 
يبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل فأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعفو عنا وفي لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان اللهم انصر المسلمين بالشام وفي فلسطين في الهند وبنغال في باكستان في وزيرستان في العراق في شريلانكا في 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 الجزيرة العرب في كل مكان يا الله اللهم انصر المسلمين في تركيا في لبنان في مصر اللهم انصرهم يا الله انصرهم يا الله في ليبيا وتونس والمغرب وموريتانيا في الجزائر في السودان والصومال والحبشة وإريتريا اللهم انصر المسلمين في السنغال وفي نيجيريا في غيني في في أفريقيا غربية في كل مكان يا الله اللهم انصر المسلمين في أوروبا اللهم انصرنا هنا في أمريكا الشمالية اللهم انصرنا في هذا البلد اللهم من أراد خيرا لهذه الأمة المحمدية فوفق لكل خير ومن أراد شرا لها وللمسلمين فخذوا أخذ عزيز مقتدير واجعل تدبيرهم تدميرهم اللهم عليك بعداء الإسلام أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أكم الصلاة يرحمني يرحمكم الله